gentlemen, whether you like it or not. Yeah! <laughs> 
was so sweet. I do love a warm hand on my entrance. <laughs> my name is Hedwig. Please welcome those ambassadors of Eastern Block Rock. The Angry Inch. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. In the flesh. And of course, my man Friday. Do Thursday. Yitzhak. There's really no need. There's none. There's none whatsoever. <laughs> I am so thrilled <laughs> to be with you here tonight in the last bastion of paradise, Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma! You, you do realize that you have a show tour for a state song. <laughs> Yet, you continually elect bigoted homophobes. It doesn't actually compute. It's like uh, a Japanese cowboy. <laughs> something we don't see very often. But I am thankful for this sanctuary that is known as the Boom. <laughs> the Boom. What does that mean, the boom? You walk in and boom, you're gay. That's how it works for me. But I am so thrilled that you could all join us here for our opening. And when it comes to huge openings, a lot of people think of me. Many more of you, however, have only recently become aware of me. It took a tragedy for you to Pay attention, but now you're interested, hmm? intrigued, even. Who is this head wig, and why have we never heard about her before, Bob? Well, that is a question I have been asking myself for years now. Minus the Bob, of course. <laughs> that wouldn't work. <laughs> How did some slip of a girly boy from communist East Berlin become the internationally Song stylist Bell is having the ball. Well, that's what I want to talk about here tonight. I'm not here to talk about calamity or scandal. I'm not here to talk about my relationship with a certain well-known rock icon by the name of Tommy Gnosis. Even though at this moment he is probably speaking about me. By some freak coincidence, he is previewing his tour of atonement tonight in the greater OKC metro area and beyond in the ether that is known as lifechurch.tv. <laughs> Can you see the glow of the giant cross <laughs> judging all in this room? I can, and it's damn tacky. <laughs> Was driving. He was on blow. 
He was getting blown <laughs> by yours truly. <laughs> and he did hit that school bus full of deaf children. One survived, now blind. <laughs> I taught him everything he knows and has apparently forgotten about rock and roll and he barely even mentions my name on that giant sucking sound Larry King calls the show. Which I'm sure you all saw because if you hadn't, I'd be singing in Tulsa tonight. <laughs> all right. Calm down, settle down. Just, I, I have nothing against Tulsa. I've never even been to Tulsa. It's an Oklahoma town. Picked it out of a week. It's actually interesting to know that Tulsa is a slut. If you spell it backwards. <laughs> So it can't be all that bad. <laughs> Speaking of sluts, I'd like to take a moment to see. Did my agent Phyllis Stein make it out here tonight? Phyllis, did, have you. Did you know that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm wide open tonight. You see, the road is my home. My home. The road. But when I think about all the people I have come upon in my travels, I have to think about the people who have come upon me. <laughs> I'm talking about the geography of human contact, the triangulation of a pair of eyes on my face, the latitude and longitude of a hand on my body. These are my only clues as to my place in this world, as to who I am. Who is Mystery Woman? <laughs> I laugh because I will cry if I don't. <laughs> am I laughing or am I crying? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <sighs> I recently found my first diary, aged two through six. <laughs> fully illustrated. <laughs> And I realize that so many people have touched me on my way to this stage <laughs> tonight. How can I say who touched me the most? Was it my father, the American G.I., who left when I was barely old enough to speak my first words? Daddy, when I grow up, I will kill you. <laughs> or was it my East German mother? You know, when, when she touched me, it was usually by accident reaching for the beans at the table or something. Oh, sorry, have I touched you? <laughs> Would not let that happen again. One day we were watching Jesus Christ Superstar on American Forces television. I turned to Mother. Jesus said the darndest things. She slapped me. Don't you ever mention that name to me. Again. But he died for our sins. So did Hitler. <laughs> Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Better to be powerless, my son. Well, she got her wish when the wall went up. We happened to be living on the east side, and Mother was given a job teaching sculpture to limbless children. <laughs> Communism, God rest its soul. <laughs> Most of my time I spent listening to American Forces Radio. Our apartment was so small that Mother made me play in the oven. Late at night I would... <laughs> Creep into the kitchen and rest my head on the top rack and listen to the American masters Tony Tenille, <laughs> Debbie Boone, <laughs> Anne Murray, who, who was actually a Canadian working in the American idiom. And then there were the crypto homo rockers 
Iggy Park, <laughs> Lil Reed, David Bowie, <laughs> who, who was actually an idiom working in America and Canada. <laughs> so, these artists left as deep an impression on me as that oven rack did on my face. Oh, to be a young American muskrat, love soft as an easy chair, not even the chair. I am, I say, have I never been young? Have I never tried? When the colored girls sing, I sing alone. I never with the melody. How could I do it better than Tony or Debbie? Once I couldn't resist. It can't be wrong if it feet. Mother threw a tomato at my head. No, I was really quite content to sing gentle backup harmonies in my oven while Mother sculpted in the shower. When the hour grew late and it was time for bed, Mother would shout from the bathroom, Well, that's me! And I would shout from the kitchen, Then I guess that's me too! We would wash our feet and brush our teeth and lay down on the narrow pallet we had shared ever since Daddy left, like two pieces of a puzzle that didn't quite fit, but are jammed together and left on a table by some dangerous shut-in with too much time on his hands! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm completely dilated right now. <laughs> I would like to share a bedtime story with you that Mother once whispered to me in the dark and then later retracted. <laughs> Whatever allowed her to share such a story with a small boy, I'll never know. I remember it as if it happened yesterday. Look the earth is too flat, clouds made of fire, and mountains stretched up to the sky, sometimes higher. Folks roam the earth, like big rolling pegs they have, two sets of arms they have, two sets of legs they have, two faces peering at one giant head, saying, watch all around them as they talk while they read, and they never, nothing of love.
Last time I saw you, you just spit in two. It was living in me. I was living in you. You had a way so familiar that I could not recognize, but you had blood on your face. together again. Hmm? Is that what daddy was doing? <laughs> Can two people actually become one again? And if we're driving on the autobahn when it happens, can we still use the diamond lane? <laughs> Practical questions of wholeness. Completion. Think of it. Give me a fucking break. I, I thought of it. I thought of the, the power. The gods would be terrified. <laughs> it's very funny itself. The magnifying side. Oh. It's very passive aggressive. Very cute. Oh, look, it's up. Immigration! If you behave, I might let you shave my back. <laughs> that will be all. Ooh. How's my hair tonight? <laughs> tepid. That was a tepid response. You made me use the word tepid. I don't oft, I don't oft say tepid. So, let's back up. How's my hair tonight? Is that, is that trouble in the West Wing? These are, these are actually my lungs. My Aquanet lungs. That's a two for one joke there. You get, you get a beauty product joke, and then you get a Jethro Tull joke. 
Super hot. You're welcome. Uh, I want you to be serious for a moment. Just the other day, I was telling Yitzhak how nervous I was about tonight. Would I still be able to fit into that old Sergio Valente? <laughs> well, there was no time to diet, so I had my heart removed. <laughs> Suddenly, I was a perk size eight. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to see that, ladies and gentlemen. When I met him, he said he wanted to be a model. <laughs> a foot model, maybe, but enough about him. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Let's get back to what we are talking hey. about. Oh. Yes, did someone say my name? <laughs> I thought I, I heard my name. But I did not hear my name, at any rate. <coughs> Pardon me, but I'm not dear. I realized there was only one person who had ever really been there for me in my life. And that person was me. The accident was a cry for help. I was yelling, help, to me. Still going at it. <laughs> I applaud your tenacity. To finish up, we're well into the play by now. Alright, good to see you out there. You're doing fine, Oklahoma. <laughs> but what, what about me? And without me, he would have never swerved into that oncoming short bus and got all of that attention. <sighs> okay, all right. Uh, let me just take a moment here against the advice of my lawyer, Gloria Allred. <laughs> Third cousin, Gloria Allred. <laughs> it's a real person, do <laughs> I have just wrapped up a late night engagement in the meatpacking district. <laughs> okay, so you've, you've heard of Soho? No ho. Well, this is me, Paul. That's how that joke works. I am standing there on 14th Street, the very boulevard of Mee Pa, when a limo pulls up. I step into it, naturally mistaking it for my own. And there's that Tommy Nelson's. Oh my god. We were both astonished. It, it had been years. So we, we dropped the driver off and drove up and down the boulevard doing drugs, catching up. He spoke of the disappointing sales of his second album, the one he wrote without me. He spoke of his loneliness. I reminded him of happier times. <laughs> Just couldn't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you will know the rest, so yeah. You can imagine that the story broke Tommy's people off with me a small fortune to keep all of this to myself. As if I would accept their filthy lucre. As if selling the story of someone else's pain was my only source of income. As if I hadn't already launched my new fragrance, Atrocity, <laughs> by hitting a fragrance for a man, or a woman, or a freak. Right? I digress. <laughs> One day in the late mid 80s, I was in my early late 20s. <laughs> I had just been dismissed from university after delivering a brilliant lecture on the aggressive influence of German philosophy on rock and roll entitled, You Can't Always Get What You Want. <laughs> Readers in this room. Huh? <laughs> oh, 
copy a newspaper. <laughs> At 26, my academic career was over. I had never kissed a boy, and I was still sleeping with mom. The search for my other half on my side of the wall had proved to be futile. Might he be found on the other? But how to get over? People died trying. Such were the thoughts flooding my tiny little head. On that day, I was sunbathing on an old bomb crater I had discovered near the wall. I am naked, face down on a piece of broken church, inhaling a fragrant westerly breeze. The new McDonald's had just opened on the other side. My God, I deserve a break today. All I ever get is the unhappy meal. The sun is hot, but I feel a sudden chill. I look over my shoulder and see a head-shaped shadow resting on the pillow of my ass. Girl, I sure don't mean to annoy you, but uh, my name is Corporal Luther Robinson. I turn my body to face him. My name is Hansel. <laughs> Luther is silent for a moment as he stares at my little bishop in a turtleneck. <laughs> Hansel. Well, you must like candy. I like gooey baron. <laughs> Out of his pocket comes a strange packet that says gummy bears on it. I select a single clear bear. It's the biggest one I have ever seen. Its taste is completely different from a gummy, yet somehow familiar. It's much sweeter than a gummy and softer too. It's tiny. Gummy body stretches on the rack of my molars. <gasps> wow! <laughs> I feel so optimistic. <laughs> what is that flavor? He pours me a handful, his eyes heavy with an unfamiliar desire. Could it be the desire to please? Me? I suddenly recognize the flavor in my mouth. It's the taste of power. Not bad. <laughs> Damn, Hansel. I can't believe you're not a girl. Mm, you're so fine. Why don't you take the whole bag? He searches my face for the news of his fate. His expression is echoed in scores of tiny little faces pressed against clear plastic, panting faces of every imaginable color, creed, and non-Aryan origin fogging up the bag like the windows of a Polish bathhouse. <laughs> it's only a shower. Absolute power. I push Luther away and stumble naked through the ruins, back towards blander, less complicated confections, leaving in my wake a trail of rainbow carnage. The next day, Hansel follows the trail back. Und lying there on the slab are three Milky Ways, a roll of Necker wafers, some Pop Rocks, and a giant sized sugar daddy named Luther! <laughs>
And I was thinking you looked so fine in a velvet dress with heels and an ermine skull.
November 9th, 1988, the tiny registrar's office with a breathtaking view over the wall. Herr Hansel Schmidt becomes Mrs. Hedvig Robinson. November 9th, 1989, Junction City, Kansas. I sat alone in my mobile home and on bootleg cable watched the wall come down. I am divorced, I am penniless, I am a woman. <laughs> I cry because I'm gonna laugh if I don't. Suddenly, I'm his mother. I consider for a moment turning East Berlin, but then remember with envy of her recent escape to sunny Yugoslavia. <laughs> Perhaps Luther would come home. Oh, no, he was never the one, never the missing half. I catch myself in the mirror, oh God, and for the first time, see clearly the horror hunkering on my head. It's the same carpet remnant that Luther presented to me a year ago to disguise my receiving. Who's here? I'm receiving. I rip it from my scalp and hurl it across the room as a pile of unopened anniversary presents. And there it lies, feigning shock. My personal hair system. My personal hair. My headwig.
the other end along the positions. I direct your attention to the two strings. We're going to have a little sing along. Won't that be fun? spokeswoman for the Greater Tourism Board of Serbia. Come back to Greater Serbia. Come Christian, come Jew. We hope 
hope that you'll join us. We've cleansed it for you. <laughs> Oh, just wait. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling a little isolated over here. Have I introduced my husband yet, so... No, don't do that. <laughs> um, we, we met during the great Croatian tour of the early mid-90s. <laughs> he was the most famous drag queen in Zagreb. Phyllis thought that he would make a great opening act. Billed as... <laughs> The last Jewess in the Balkans, he lip-sync something from Yentl, <laughs> under the name Christian Nacht. <laughs> That's the one. It's wildly inappropriate. <laughs> if you don't get it now, go home. Google it. <laughs> Rewind your brain back to now and laugh harder. <laughs> and I was, uh, he thought that was him. He was, he was good. He was too good. His applause drowned out my introduction, but I refused to go on. But, on my way out, <laughs> he begged me, begged me, to take him with me. Oh, my face might have been my mother's. It was so still. I said, Christel, to walk away, you gotta leave something behind. I'll marry you on the condition that a wig Never touch your head again. We agreed and we've been inseparable ever since and will continue to be, isn't that right, Yitzhak? Hmm? Oh, look, Yitzhak, immigration! Mandy Patinkin! <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, that's Lee and Michelle. <laughs> they look exactly alike. <laughs> No fun. Go back to your hole. <coughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are becoming fans of Hedwig. <laughs> because I certainly, I, I certainly feel like I am becoming a. What? <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in the evening, I. I am positive that Mr. Tommy Gnosis is finally getting around to talking about me, 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 me. Oh, we're going to try this again. One day, this little tail of trash kid put on some of his mom's eyeliner, grabbed his beat up JC Penny guitar, and called himself. Tommy Gnosis. Tommy, can you hear me? <laughs> Tommy, can you hear me? Oh. Out of this milkless tit, you have sucked the very business we call show. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, you, you want to hear about... You want to hear about Tommy Gnosis? Yeah, well, I, will, I will tell you about Tommy Gnosis. Get this dead fucking thing off me. After my divorce, I had scraped by with babysitting gigs and odd jobs, mostly the jobs we call blow. <laughs> I had lost my job at the base PX and I had lost my gag reflex. 
You do the man. <laughs> Scan that couplet. <laughs> I was, I was sitting for the baby of General Speck, commander of the nearby army fort. His other son, his older son, was the artist formerly known as my butt boy. <laughs> yes, Tommy Speck. Tommy Speck was a 17-year-old, four-eyed, pockmarked, Dungeons and Dragons obsessed Jesus freak with a fish on his truck. I felt him incredibly hot. <laughs> Perhaps it was his disdain for authority or his struggle with organized religion. But one day I walked in on him punishing the Pope. <laughs> he was in the bath. The door wide open, clearly waiting for me, so I reached down and finished his grace off. That's the end of that religious metaphorical trilogy. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> no more, that's it. And I dropped a flyer on the, on the bath mat. Tommy, I am performing a short set tonight at Dr. Espresso's Seattle style coffee enema bar. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you there. I had recently returned to my first love, music. I tried singing once back in Berlin. They threw tomatoes. After the show, I had a nice salad. <laughs> but, newly motivated, I bought a cheap electric piano. <laughs> that song was built in. That's how uh, old <laughs> That was. <laughs> and I found a couple of Korean sergeant's wives who churned out a mean rhythm section. We became uh, quite a draw at Dr. Espresso's, singing the hits of the day under the name The Angry Inch. That night, the audience was small, but hostile. <laughs> song by Kurt Cobain. Now that kid's got a future, huh? <laughs> and how about Quang Yee on guitar? <laughs> Give it up, Quang! Give it up. Give it up, Quang. Uh, it looks like we have a little celebrity over there by the sweet and low. Tommy Speck, the general's son. That's, that's more applause than I got, honey. <laughs> Oh, he's embarrassed. <laughs> I'm a little nervous too. You, you see, this is the first, first song I've ever written. And it's written for a guy to sing. But we're talking to Phil Collins' as people. But then again, aren't we all? Oh, <laughs> 
Story. His face might have been a Yes album cover, it was so still. <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your personal Savior? I, I told him I was familiar with our Lord. Loved his work. You know what he was saving us from was his fucking father. I mean, what kind of a God? creates Adam out of his own image, pulls Eve out of him to keep him company, and then tells them both not to eat from the tree of knowledge. I mean, he was so micromanaging, you know, so uptight, and so was Adam, but Eve, Eve just wanted to know shit. You know, she, she took a bite of the apple, and she found out what was good and what was evil, and she gave it to Adam so that he would know because they were in love, and that was good. They now knew. Hedley? Will you give me the apple? <laughs> the words, the words spilling from his lips, his eyes, his irises were clear cylinders of surprising depth and emptiness. Only a few puddles of bluish pain sloshed around inside. So blue as my eyes. At the time. Tommy's performance options were limited to the occasional guitar mass. So I initiated a six-month curriculum of rock history, 
lyrics, grooming, good vocal training, my patented oven technique. <laughs> For his graduation, I gave him his name, Tommy Gnosis. The Greek word for knowledge. We collaborated, songs exploded out of us. He started singing back up for me, a doctor espressos. Teenage girls started showing up, I added a few duets. Standing room only. Then, the sizzler called. <laughs> You're laughing. Has the sizzler ever called you? <laughs> I do not think it has. <laughs> Within three months, we were outgrossing monster trucks in Wichita. <laughs> With that kind of money coming in, I was able to give up all of my jobs. <laughs> and devote ourselves entirely to our career. We were very happy. One day I am curled up in my trailer with my usual mid-afternoon constitutional of grain alcohol and fritter. <laughs> I like to be good to myself. <laughs> when Tommy is at the door in tears, Honey, what is it? My mom, my dad, my parents. I hold him as I had never been held by that usual thing squirms, slides behind me and clutches my spine to his chest. <coughs> I am suddenly very much aware of the fact that we have not kissed in all of the months we've been together. In fact, he has maintained a near-perfect ignorance of the entire front of me. Perhaps because of his preference for over-the-shoulder love. Honey, why don't you work on that new song while I finish shaving your eyebrows? Shit. Another song blows in from the trailer next door. And I, I will this, <laughs> this same song has been playing on a loop for three days. Tommy looks up at me with new lenses, one blue, one gray. What do you think? Does love last forever? No, but this song does. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock a multi-platinum single. I wish I could hit those notes. Just move your lips and I'll sing them for you, honey. From a shadowy corner of the stage like Mick Jagger's backup singer. We laugh at the professional reference. <laughs> I return to his bra. Seriously, Tom, yes. I believe love is immortal. Look what you do. God damn it! Well, how is it immortal? Well, perhaps because love creates something there that wasn't there before. What, like procreation? Yes, but not only. Well, like, recreation. <laughs> he grabs my ass and laughs. I don't. Well, sometimes, sometimes just creation. Don't move. I paint a bold silver cross on his forehead. Honey, have you thought about a B-flat after that B? Look what you've done. And I... <laughs> Tommy slowly rises and draws the curtains that are attached at the top and the bottom. He reaches out his hand. I take it. And I notice how well his Harlem Spice nail color complements my own dusty lenses. <laughs> 
he spins me into his arms and thrusts his pelvis into the small of my back. Look what you've done. You made me whole. Before I met you, I was the song. Now I'm the video. Look what I've done. I made you whole. You know that you were just a ham. Then came me, the door. I'm a good baby. <laughs> she laughs, and I'm filled with an ancient clarity. He's the one. No blood in his face, no blood in his eyes. He's the one. The one who went away. The one who left. The twin born by fission. He'll die in fusion. Our fusion, cold fusion. Unlimited power, unlimited knowledge. The secrets we must share. The memories we once knew but are now forgotten. The words to complete the sentence I began. I am. My eyes fill with muddy Maybelline tears. When Eve was still inside of Adam, they were in paradise. But when she was separated from him, that's when paradise was lost. So when she enters him again, paradise will be regained. That's right, honey, however you want it. Just kiss me while we do it. I wrench my body around to face him and thrust his hands between my legs.
nice over here. But no matter how hard I try, I end up black and blue. I rose from off how the doctor slept. I lost a piece of my heart. Thank you. 
song that someone wrote to me a long time ago. And I don't know where she is tonight. But if you're real quiet, maybe she can hear me. <laughs>
We are better scars. Yes, we are faint and laugh. We all sigh in the dark. Get cut off before we start. And as the first act. Yeah. 